What is up crew, it's your boy KSM, and on today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the easiest way to stylize your faces. We're going to go over some of the easy stylizing techniques, basic forms, and then we'll talk a little bit about exaggeration. And if it's your first time here, welcome into the KSM crew. My name is KSM, and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design. And I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Now, if it is your first time here, these are going to be the references that we're going to be going over today as an example, but you can actually grab these references over on my Discord channel for free while I'm live. And so here's the sheet that we'll be looking at today. Uh, the one on the left is actually stuff that I've drawn for The Last of Us, uh, uh, for the show The Last of Us here, just some kind of fun character drawings. And then these are Valorant uh characters or valorant agents i should say and then these right here are some references that we're going to be looking at today now these two right here are going to be uh, this one is from my art book which i'll be releasing hopefully later this year so you can go ahead and grab this one and then also here was a cheat sheet that i made for uh last year's boot camp in 2022 where we cover some of the interesting shape design stuff and these are from tv Choi, and this one's actually from disney so go ahead and grab these guys these are free to grab if you're watching live and if you're not watching live well now you kind of know what to do come out to my live streams and grab some more free stuff out here on top of all the the free stuff that i already offer on youtube and other platforms and uh thank you for the follow as um as well nx uh whl and everybody else who's coming in here, Johnny, uh, Josuke, and Index Page, and all the other follows. But all right, guys, let's get right into today's stream. Um, we've got here these, uh, again, these Valorant characters. And we're going to, so what I think today what I want to do is I want to do a little bit of a different type of demo where I want to go over some of the design aspects of uh, these three characters first. And then from there, we'll actually start doing our demos using the references that I, um, the ones that I have here. So the way that I wanna do this is I kinda wanna highlight here, let me kinda do some quick overlaps here. Um, when it comes to stylizing your characters, there are so many different ways to stylize. Stylization can come from the lines that you use, it can come from the way that you draw eyes, it can come from the way that you color, and all of that stuff. Today, I'm going to be talking specifically about using shape design, because I think it's one that you can utilize no matter what style you're going for. It's a very valuable technique, whether you want to go for a more realistic look, or you're going for something more cartoony. Now, really quick, I'm going to go kind of go over each of these three here, and I'll talk about some of the interesting things that the artists are doing to make these characters really pop and give them some of that interesting shape now for this character here i i think her name is reyna i'm actually not too familiar because i've only started recently playing uh valorant but i would say here one of the nice things that i'm looking at for this character is she basically has here a lot of these rounded shapes so let me lower the opacity just a little bit more you can kind of see so I would actually argue that she has a rounded shape. Now, what's really cool about this character, uh, Reyna, is generally speaking, um, characters with more circular designs usually are meant to evoke friendliness, uh, welcomeness, or welcomingness. I don't know if that's a word, but generally, they're meant to be a little bit more on the friendly side. So you'll see a lot of characters with circular forms being kind of uh, approachable, right, and all of that stuff. But interestingly enough, you can also use it for a little bit more of a, uh, a well-rounded look, right? So she's, in this case, moving in the chat, saying she's scary looking, right? She has a bit of intimidation to her. And so just because, you know, there are general uh, kind of uh, connotations for different shapes, it doesn't mean that you have to use those shapes for for everything that they're meant to be looking at, right? So for, and, and what I mean here is that, Every circle design doesn't have to be friendly, but in her case, it can showcase that she's a well-rounded character. So here, we'll take a look at some of the designs that we're seeing at right here. So we'll take a look at this. Notice how the earrings are pretty well-rounded, but then also they also added in here some nice triangular shapes, right? So it's like she could be approachable, but also at the same time, she's actually, you know, more well-rounded and she's still got a little bit of a danger to her. You, you, you almost feel uneasy looking at her because you see all these round shapes, but then you're kind of also met here with a lot of sharp angles, right? So here's another example of that right here. Notice this motif, right? So you see it here, nice rounded shape there for the, um, for the collar, but then it's also contrasted here with this kind of sharp, uh, 
triangular shapes there even right here on the arm take a look at that right so she's got like a tattoo right there and a nice rounded shape and then also even the hairstyle right here so the hairstyle is also going to be a rounded form but you also see here some sharpness there with the hairline right so these nice kind of contrasts and the shapes can actually really one solidify the character design eh, but also it can um it can tell you a lot about the character too so i think these are kind of great ones there so i think she's a nice kind of circular character but again um don't feel like circular designs have to be friendly all the time um they could you could use these designs to help kind of give a false sense of uh impression of these characters maybe that's the word i was looking for a nice false sense of impression uh but yes welcome in everyone who's coming in here hopefully you guys are doing well today and i hope you guys enjoyed today's stream uh we are going over shape design today and we'll also do our own examples when we actually draw some portraits so i kind of want to knock through some of these first and then we'll get into that also uh ao26 and everybody else coming in here welcome in guys um KSM has been taken over by the Valo fever. I did start playing Valorant last week, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not that good at the game, but boy, oh boy, does the art of Valorant look really good. I might do some, I might actually do some character designs for Valorant just for fun, because I don't know. I really, <laughs> I'm hooked on the designs. I think the, the, the designs are really well done. All right, so um, we've got here next uh, this guy. I don't know his name. Brim I think it's Brimstone, actually. And you can kind of tell right away with Brimstone, he's got a very boxy design. Now, usually characters that have square designs are going to be characters that are going to be stable characters. They're strong characters. They're built, usually unmovable. So sometimes you'll see like tanky characters. Uh, you know, you'll see tanky characters be built in this boxy structure. But they're usually pretty stable characters and you can kind of see the motif of this one across this character right here so you have for example the even this logo right here right but the first obvious one is going to be the face so the face here is very very boxy right a very structured face there um even the structure of the hat itself follows kind of these small medium large shape designs and then you'll even see these subtle designs as well um on the on the clothing right so the gear that he has is also relatively pretty boxy uh overall so you can kind of see here how these shape designs start to really um start to really embed themselves over here when you look at the characters a little bit more into detail you'll start to see like oh yeah you know what i see a little bit of that uh the shape there like even here take a look at his beard right his beard's got a bit of squareness to it as well so this could have been a tapered beard it could have been a rounded beard but they decided to choose a nice kind of boxy uh shape there so uh that's going to be the square type of character right and then last but not least here i actually chose this character i think her name is Ray's. Um, the reason why I chose Raze today was because I felt like n some of these character designs can be arguable, and this is where I think it becomes part of a creative interpretation. But for for here, I actually want to say that Raze, I want to make her a triangular character here, um, and with a little bit of rounded shape there. Now, I think she has a lot of rounded motifs, and so in many ways, you could argue that Raze is a round character, um, and there's a lot of motifs that can kind of help convey that roundness, right? But again, it's as, it's also your take as an artist to be able to incorporate the different types of elements that you want to include. And so for my personal take, given her hairstyle and some of the other things that I'm seeing here, I actually feel like she has more of a triangular look here. Um, her overall silhouette is going to give off like a hairstyle here that fans out this way. And so you can kind of see that's this is why I would say this is actually more of a triangular look. I also feel like her jaw is tapered out a bit more as well, too. So it's kind of tapered out this way. So again, a lot of these things are creative interpretation. This is probably why I wanted to showcase this reference, because I think you can go at it at multiple angles. And I think as an artist, it's really up to your, uh, your choice to be able to say like, okay, I want these characters to be more triangular. Um, I want them to be a bit more rounder maybe. Right. And so going in and choosing those things and helping convey that across your image will actually help out a lot so i think for this one you can go either way um you can go for a round shape you can go for a triangular shape though personally if i were to design a character like her i'd probably push for a little bit more of a triangular motif 
Uh, maybe we can do that by tapering the hair out a little bit. Maybe adding some sharpness here. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll play around with that in a little bit. But overall, these were the three types of kind of shape designs that I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, and then from here, let's go in now and let's actually talk a little bit about applying some of these techniques into some of the references that I've picked out here today. Uh, thank you for the Prime Sub 2, by the way, X High. And also thank you for the follows, Kiwi Segura, and everybody else who's coming in here, guys. Uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well. But again, um, what I always want to reiterate here with you guys is that these are just some general shape design techniques. Don't feel like these are the only shapes that you can use or that the only ones you have to use or that the corresponding uh, meaning of the characters uh, or the shape designs have to be what you create your characters uh, as well. So triangular shapes, again, I don't, maybe I didn't say this one yet, but triangular shapes basically are meant to kind of uh, show agility. They're meant to showcase a little bit of sharpness, uh, a little bit of danger to them. And I actually think this is why I chose a triangular shape design for this character, Ray's, because I feel like Ray's, um, if you guys don't know, she uses a lot of explosives in her um, in her kit as an ability. She moves around a lot by us utilizing the explosions and stuff. And so it's kind of interesting to see how they utilize shape designs and incorporate that with the abilities of the characters as well. Uh, and that is why I feel like she gives off a kind of like a, a subtle, maybe even hidden triangular shape design with the overall structure of her head and so forth. Uh, but there you go. That was the quick little demo that I wanted to do uh, with Valorant characters. I wanted to showcase that today because I feel like I wanted to show you guys where in like real life or not real life, where in like artistic application um, do we start seeing some of these shape design uh, aspects. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick out some references with you guys. We're going to go over these together and then I'm going to try to, you know, add some shape design here and draw these characters out. Uh, with a little bit more of a stylized look and i think that's going to be kind of the actual practice for today now if you guys want to grab the references again these are available on the discord channel uh, these are going to be the three references that we're going over today and uh, i guess let's just jump right in um let's see here i haven't picked anybody though she looks very familiar and yeah, I think that's a great that's a great practice, right? So like pick a reference of a of a person or whatever and then try to do like a portrait of them. Um and you know, kind of see how you can kind of come up with different designs and stuff. How do you use those shapes? So again, those shapes are shapes can be utilized in many ways. I think for me personally, I like to use shape design um in in my character designs as a way to help really solidify the character and solidify their motif shapes again can can uh, tell a lot about a character just from looking at the character so when you look at a character that has a lot of sharp triangular shapes you might get the impression that maybe this character is a dangerous character right uh, if you see someone who's a little bit more boxy and stuff maybe they're a tough character uh, a strong character and so shape design is all about information in some ways it's also a lot about uh, again cohesiveness but also it could just be um, something you use to something you use to maybe give a what's the word here give a twist to the character so you make a dangerous character but you make them rounded right um and so then all of a sudden you're like oh wait a minute i thought they were supposed to be a friendly character because they had all these round shapes so I think these are some of the things that again you can um, you can do, but it's really up to your um, really up to your preference and stuff. So for this one right here, we're gonna go over these references, and I'm gonna choose different shape designs for each of them. Uh, for this guy right here, I want to go for maybe a rounded shape because I feel like he's given me he's given me kind of rounded vibes, you know, very round shapes all across, and so I want to kind of do that one uh, for him. And then again, you guys can follow along if you want to, or if you guys are just hanging out here and stuff, uh, feel free to do so. But yeah, um, for those of you who are going to follow along, feel free to choose any shape for these people um, here in the references. If you want to go for more of a triangular shape for them, sure. You can also go for maybe a boxy shape for this character as well. And so we'll do that for some of these um, here today. But all right, I'm going to go start drawing this one now and um, and then we'll, we'll kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of the designs that I've, I've made here.
Um, but yeah, for those of you who are hanging out here today, hopefully you guys are doing well out here. How is your, how's your Monday so far, people? People watching live. It's a Monday. Would you rate it out of 10? How would you rate it out of 10? There you go. Personally, for me, I would say this Monday, I don't know. I think Mondays are always rough. <laughs> You got to like wake up and there's a whole, whole new week to be busy and stuff. So I'm always like cautious about Mondays, but I think it'll be okay. I think, um, the weather's been good recently for me. So I'm not like super, I don't know. I'm not super worried about it being a bad Monday. Uh, but we're going to go in here um, and I'm just going to kind of add in some details for the character. Um, maybe I'll add in a few kind of shape designs and stuff. But overall, I do want to keep some of that round motif here for this character. So we're going to keep it nice and simple. Can be better. It's a six, a five, a seven for some of you in the chat. Monday blues. I know it's it's kind of like that. Oh, pretty productive. Hey, nice. That's good to hear. Yeah, I feel like Mondays for me are always a hit or a miss because a lot of it is dependent on how the rest of the week is going to go. Mondays itself, for me, is like a catch up week because I usually that's when I like check my emails. That's when I get back into work and all of that stuff. So right now, um, for those of you wondering, uh, I'm basically utilizing some kind of face techniques here for drawing out this character. Now, I don't really talk about it too much because we've already gone over how to draw faces on my previous uh, videos and stuff, uh, but maybe we'll actually do a little bit of a structure stuff. Maybe we'll do that. Let me ask you guys in the chat. Do you guys want me to go over how I draw faces? I know it's been a while, so there's probably some of you who haven't either seen my YouTube videos for it um, or maybe you just want to recap. Let me know in the chat if you want me to go over that because I kind of I kind of just went into drawing some basic shapes here. So... <laughs> Uh, let me, let me know. Oh, okay. So a good number of you actually want me to go over it. Um, maybe we'll, okay. In that case, let me, um, we'll do it after this one. So after this face here, we'll do it on the next face. Okay. Just, uh, hopefully I don't forget, but yeah, I realize that we're kind of already, I've already done a lot here for this one. So let's kind of move on with this one first. And then we'll we'll get into the next ones. Um, did I get my taxes done? E I submitted everything I needed to submit to my accountant. We'll just find out. We'll find out later if I need to send more stuff. But hopefully, hopefully it's all squared off. Cause ah, uh, taxes. Why'd you remind me? I'm not a fan of tax season, to be honest. Not that I'm a tax evader. I do my taxes. It's just, it's just so much, uh, so much work, especially if you're a freelance artist or so last year I did a lot of freelance work. And so because of that, uh, doing my taxes this year was such a pain. I think next year it'll be a little bit easier because a good portion of, uh, what I do now is studio work. So this year is more studio work stuff. So it's a little bit more, a little more easier. Is there anyone who is a fan of tax season? Um, accountants. <laughs> accountants who get to make money um, by doing people's taxes. I think they they like tax season. But I'm sure there are people who do enjoy tax season if it's easy and you know you get money back, you know? The IRS. Yeah, the IRS enjoys tax season. There you go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, right now I'm just adding, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make the face bigger because I want to add more details and stuff to this. Um, and so we have here like this small reference, but you know, we're going to add more and more. So right now, uh, for those of you who are watching and stuff, uh, following along, I'm just adding in here, um, some of the general structures and shapes, right? So nothing too crazy. So for the most part here.
we'll leave it at the collar here and um and then i'll i'll work on the rest of the details i just wanted to have a frame here for the design before we jumped in Um, oh, thanks for the follow too. Nose, uh, no Sag, uh, Lo Loserish 2005, uh, Cinder, uh, and everybody else coming in here, guys. Appreciate all the follows. Wow. A lot of follows out here today. Thank you so much. All right. So right now I'm just roughing out the general placements of where I want the features to be. Um, and then for today's stream, I'm actually going to go in and maybe we'll talk a little bit about adding in some details. Oh, and suspicious. Thank you for the uh, for the fourteen months. Sheesh. Also, thank you for the D shrimp, uh, Ollie Rex. Appreciate that. All right. So we've got here our um, our rough kind of design for the face and stuff. Um, I'm gonna go in now, and I'm gonna just kind of lower the opacity, and let's actually start applying some of the details. And let me actually rotate his face so it's a little bit easier for me because his head is kind of tilted. Uh, thank you for the follow too, Isabel. But yeah, uh, this month, I think Twitch actually changed how ads are run uh, on the platform. And so it's a little different this time around, but I'm still getting used to it. Um, do you have a course on Skillshare? I just over the free trial, but couldn't find your course if you have one. Um, I don't have a course yet. Um, I've been thinking about possibly making one to be honest, but, uh, I don't have anything yet. But I appreciate the, appreciate you looking, which by the way, guys, um, I am sponsored by Skillshare. I think for maybe like a day or two left. I don't know exactly when, um, but if you guys haven't signed up for Skillshare yet and you're interested, um, you can check out this link right here and that'll give you, that'll, that'll give you one free month of Skillshare. And it actually also helps me out because every sign up that I get out here, uh, Skillshare will actually, uh, it's kind of like a donation to me because I'm sponsored with Skillshare. So they will hook me up every time you guys also sign up too. Uh, but again, I always tell you guys, you know, take a look at it. If you want to see how, how it is, what's on the platform, we've done plenty of demos um, of the Skillshare platform. I genuinely use it myself. So, um, but yeah, you know, take a look, but also again, it's free and it also helps me out as well too. So if you want to just give me a free donation while also getting some free education, take a look. All right. So, um, here, what we're going to do is I'm going to be going over now some of the rounder shapes here. So I'm going to keep some of the rounder motifs and see if we can kind of push some of that here for the design. So what I'll probably do here is I'll change now some of the brow shapes. So maybe I'll make the brows a little bit rounder as they wrap around the eyes there. Like so. Um, I'll do the same thing on this side right here. And so again, these are just kind of uh, general kind of techniques that we can do to kind of push the design further, they may not be part of the reference anymore. And that's okay because again, um, the reference itself is just something that you can use as a guideline. Um, in this case, for this example, I want to try to utilize more rounder shapes to the best of my ability here, um, while also retaining some of the aspect of the character that we have. So I'm going for rounder motifs. I'm changing out the brows. We might also round out the um, yeah, we'll, we'll do the glasses last, which I think is the main reason why I, I, I gave them a, a round motif. Um, but we're going to add all of those aspects in that'll, all, that'll really help, uh, stylize the character a bit more as well too. Those rounded glasses though, that's really the big selling point, but there's a lot of things. I think the rounded glasses, the, um, the the uh, what is it called a beanie the beanie on his head right so there's a, like a few elements here that i think we can utilize um but let's see here how do you organize for the references sometimes i don't know where to study from from books from other artists or from internet um i think it depends so usually whenever i pick a reference for my boot camps i always think about what what is my topic what are the things that i want to study um 
you know, uh, for that given time. And so based off of whatever it is I want to study, that is what I'm going to also be looking at to grab references for, like what kind of references will help me, um, will help me achieve, uh, whatever it is I want to study. So that's usually how I think about it. So I think about what the topic is first. And then from that topic, I'll try to find some resources that can, uh, can, can help accompany that topic. Um, but also for those of you guys who are coming in, thank you again for all the follows. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ksem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to all things related to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm actually prepping to work as a designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you like anime or animation, or you just like hanging out with my dog who is sleeping over there, um, do leave a follow, and I hope you guys enjoy uh, today's stream. Uh, sunglasses have pretty triangular shapes without looking too weird. So I guess it could work. Yeah. So, um, I think with, um, again, so with that example that I showed you guys with the, uh, with the Valorant characters, not everything has to be triangular or circular, right. For the motif to work. I think it's good to have some balance of some like secondary shapes as well. Um, and so the glasses, you know, like you, you can have a, a very villainous character with, with triangular shapes. Um, and then you, you know, you can still give them a round of glasses. You can still give them square glasses. Um, that's okay. Um, that could be part of their secondary motif. Like maybe they're a character that appears friendly, like maybe an evil scientist, right? Who has like these rounded glasses and they look like they could be a friendly character, but then later in the story, they take off their glasses and you're like, Oh, okay. This guy's actually, you know, pretty bad. So I think there's oftentimes a lot of use cases of different shapes and stuff. So yeah, Aizen is a character that, you know, he wears glasses, he has a lot of rounded shapes, and when you look at him, you're like, Aizen, what a good dude, Aizen. And then he, and then he, like, takes off his glasses, he, like, combs his hair back, and he's just like, I, uh, you know what I'm talking about? I am the baddie, or whatever. Yeah, it's like a revelation moment, 100%. Um, thank you for the followers, Ayo26 and Guton. Kabuto from Naruto. Mmm, Kabuto is a puppet guy, right? It's been a while. It's been a, it's actually been a quick minute since I've seen uh, Naruto. I believe he's the puppet guy. Let me think. I would say Kabuto's got very boxy features, though. But it's been a while. I have to, I'd have to look. But yeah, I think he was also kind of uh, villainous for a bit. Getting minion vibes. Minion vibes from Spy Kids. You guys are throwing back stuff that I don't <laughs> that I don't remember. What are the, the there are minions from Spy Kids? I know I know there are there are minions minions the one that everyone everyone loves for some reason the the yellow guys. Uh, Kabuto was Orichimaru's. Oh right, who who am I thinking about? Ka Kankuro or something? Who's the puppet guy? It also starts with a K though, right? Kan Kankuro maybe? Kabuto, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kabuto, hundred percent. That guy, that guy flipped real quick. Sorry for the spoilers. Yeah, I remember now. Kabuto, man with the gray hair, and he like, he was so down bad. The guy was, that guy was brainwashed. He was, he was marinated so hard. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. The thumb thumbs. Oh man. Um, is it really spoiler after like a decade? Yeah, I feel like they're like spoiler warnings expire after a certain time, you know, like there's going to be a point where like if you haven't seen it, and if you don't know by now, that's on you because it's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's been a minute since that stuff has come out. People are like, but but I watch Boruto. I haven't seen I haven't seen the uh, the story about his dad. Like, OK, all right, that's fair, I guess for my for my Boruto fans out there. I apologize. I've spoiled it for you. Uh, but let's go in here. Um, and again, I'm just kind of showing you guys how I'm kind of adding in these shapes here. 
Um, a lot of the, the shape design doesn't have to be overly, you know, exaggerated as well, but we could do that. Um, so I could show you guys how to kind of exaggerate those features, but here overall, we've got here the, the guy's head and all of that stuff. And I'm utilizing, I'm kind of rounding out here some of the shapes, right? So I'm rounding out here the form of the, that brow section, rounding out the form there of the chin, um, the cheeks as well. I'm making sure that ear is nice and round as well too. And so we're utilizing a lot of different shapes here to kind of, uh, to really kind of showcase some of the features. Uh, what about the people who are recently born? What about them? Wait, what? Um, <laughs> uh, my, my real voice has been revealed. I know. Uh, oh, they don't deserve spoilers. Yeah, I'm sorry to those, to those people. <laughs> I see. I see what you're saying. Um, also Molly, how's it going, Molly? Welcome back in. All right, so um, let's go in here and add some hair design to this. So you can kind of see how we're building up the structure here, right? Uh, nice and easy on the design. Nothing too, I think, crazy, I would say. Uh, also, Whitebird, hey, welcome back in too. Please show a short example of exaggerating the features if you have time. Could be interesting to see. Um, yeah, don't worry. We're going to be doing that especially with her because, yeah, we're, there, there's a lot. Don't worry. We're going to do a lot of examples here, a lot of variations uh, for today. I just hope we get to it. Okay. Um, let's see here. If you wear glasses, you're a bad person. Wait, what? I I have never said that. That's a <laughs> that's a lie. Don't listen to chat, okay? If you wear glasses, guys, you're not a bad person. I mean, some of you might be, actually, but not everyone who wears glasses are bad people. But um, all right here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to utilize some of that rounded shape here. So rounded shapes here, we're going to kind of use that there. Uh, I'm going to kind of round out the hair as well. So let me embrace some of these lines that we drew. I'll, I'll draw in these lines later to showcase some of the shape design. Um. There you go. It's not true. I'm a bad person and I don't wear glasses. <laughs> there you go. Um, how's it going, Kaiza? Uh, welcome back. First time here. I love how cozy and refreshing the stream is. Awesome work. Ah, oh, thank you, Frank. Appreciate that. Appreciate the kind words. And thank you, everybody who has, who has also been coming in here today, uh, following the streams and all that. If you guys did follow me recently, I'd love to know. I'd love to know how you guys came across my channel today. How did you come across my stream? Um, yeah, feel free to share. Was it from recommended? Was it from the front page of Twitch? Was it from the, my YouTube channel perhaps? I think I would just give him the beanie now. I think what he has is he has like a beanie that kind of wraps around this way. So we'll do that. And then let's maybe flip the canvas a little bit and warp a few things out as well, too. Yeah. What did I do? Uh, let's go like this. Mm, I think this one needs to kind of pull back a little bit more. So let's try that one more time. Mm 
Okay. I like that better. Nice. Um, can confirm Harry Potter was the most infamous dark wizard. Yeah, he was evil. Front page. Oh, really? Nice. Sheesh. Um, let's see here. Uh, thank you for the, thank you for the reset, by the way. Original Gnome Rook. Appreciate that. Looks like a headband. Um, yeah, so he's got, it's, um, it's not necessarily a headband. It's just more like the, the additional fold on top of the beanie that he's wearing. So we're just going to be adding some of that on there. That should be good. Uh, it's just fun to watch you do your amazing art. I have fun watching people do art. It's so peaceful. Oh, thank you, Ar uh, Artie. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, gla glasses people are bad guys. They're evil. <laughs> oh, no. What if we've discovered something new? Is it true that every, every person that wears glasses is bad? I don't know, man. This is a revelation. I mean, I wear glasses. Not on stream, though. But if I do wear glasses on stream, I'm sure I would look like a villain too. Damn. Say it ain't so. Kasem is the reverse Aizen. <laughs> what? Yeah, there you go. Um, isn't it true until proven otherwise? I, 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 it's wait, no, no, it's innocent until proven guilty. It's not true until proven false. What? Who made that up? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Jason. Yes. Also. Oh, wow. Thanks for the follow. Uh, Zafira and also Ria. Welcome in guys. So many people coming in here. Someone showed your video about self studying and I had to check it out. This is how I found your content. Really? You found it from my YouTube videos, huh? Ah, oh, that's super dope. Uh, there. <laughs> what about cute glasses characters? Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled guys. The internet is basically, yeah, something is true until proven false. Uh, Actually, yeah, that, that does actually sound like the internet. That sounds exactly like the internet. People on the internet are like so ready to believe anything. <laughs> as long as it has a little bit of spice to it, they're like, I believe it. This sounds, sounds real to me. Can't be a lie. Okay, but um, I think for the most part here, we've kind of locked in some of the general structure here for the face. Um, again, I'm trying to keep it uh, a little bit more on the rounder side. So let's try to see if we can warp out a few more things here. Uh, it will soften out the jaw a little bit more. Like so. Uh, and then we'll add some details here for the hair just to kind of give it a little bit more spruce sprucing out here uh, But I think overall this is gonna be the general structure here that I'm trying to go for and show you guys with the uh, With these type of shape designs, right? So again, this is more of a subtle example here where we're utilizing the almost like the clothing and all that stuff so we have here the hair we have here the uh, we have here the shape of the face. We have here also the, uh, we will have the, um, the glasses in a bit, which will, I think be a nice finishing touch. So we're adding in all these little elements here to, to the design, which I think will hopefully make it look uh, a little bit more like rounded of a, of a, of a character. Um, remember the face recaps? Oh yeah. We'll be doing that on the next one for sure. Thanks for the reminder, Ollie Rex. Um, 
is that Pedro Pascal? Uh, yeah, so these are character faces that I drew on the left over here. So the one on the right side is going to be Pedro Pascal's version of uh, Joel from Last of Us. And then the one on the right, or sorry, the one on the left, the, the one on the left side is my version of uh, what Joel could have looked like if it was like an animated series. Uh, but yeah, I drew, I drew those a while back, actually. I drew those back in, uh, back in, uh, when did I draw that? January, I think. It's been a bit of time. Um, let's see here. Um, thanks for the follow, um, XX Dick Dog, and also everyone else who's been coming on here. Uh, let me see here. If you don't mind, I just, I just want to ask a question. How AI art is affecting your job or artists around you, like in the industry? Because I started digital and I'm a total noob and AI art looks amazing. Um, sure, I can answer that question really quickly. I think for the work that I do, AI art doesn't affect it at all um, in the sense that... So I work in... For those of you who are wondering, by the way, um, I work in the animation industry uh, for the studio that does Castlevania. And so a lot of what we do um, at Castle... Uh, not at Castlevania, but at Powerhouse is um, we do a lot of 2D animation. And so usually we have to work on multiple frames and figure out the angle and the shots and stuff. Um, and so... At this time, as far as I know, AI hasn't actually uh, uh, impacted us. And oftentimes, a lot of the stuff that we do is... Um, how do we say this? How, how do I say it? It's, it's, it's a lot of it is, is um, incorporating a lot of 2D elements of design and not necessarily creating individual images. And I think a big part of that also goes into warping and kind of squishing and squashing stuff and and whatnot there might be a time there might be a time where uh, ai you know might uh what's the word optimize some parts of the animation process and i think that could be cool um, if done ethically well but for the most part um it has not impacted me i think if there are people that i've seen get some impact um at least maybe psychologically it's people who i know who work in uh, for example, video games and or um, concept artists who do live action and stuff where they're very much reliant on making some very rendered images, which I think AI is is good at doing. It's good at doing one-off rendered images. Um, but full-on sequences and stuff, it needs a lot of additional work. Um, if you guys have seen that Corridor Digital video, um, you might know what I'm talking about. But there you go. Um... But yes, I know it's funny because <laughs> every Monday, without a fail, without a fail, every Monday stream, we always get, we somehow always end up talking about AI. And it's not a bad thing. It's not like I'm telling you guys don't talk about AI on my streams. It's just an interesting thing I've noticed where Monday streams always has AI. Like Saturday streams, not really. Um, maybe Tuesday, Thursday streams, but Monday streams, 100% chance. Um, we're going to talk about AI because I think it's just something on the top of people's minds. You know, the, you go into work or you're thinking about wanting to do art and you're kind of like, oh man, AI. Monday habits? I uh, know. It's the Monday habits out here. Um, let's see here. Um, how did you end up going from software engineering to animation? I'm a software engineer myself, but also an artist. So it's interesting. Oh yeah. Um, here's what we'll do. That's a great question. Morbidly, morbidly, yo cheese. Um, how about, let's talk about that question. Um, let's talk about that. Maybe once I'm starting to draw out the second example of the face, because I feel like if we talk about it now, um, I'll only be able to briefly talk about it and then I'll have to jump in on the next example and talk about that. So if that's okay with you guys, um, I'll, I'll definitely answer that question about how I kind of was able to pivot and stuff. If you guys are interested, um, but let's do that after we knock out this one. Just someone needs to remind me. That's the only thing. Cause I, I do a really bad job of remembering. <laughs> that's just unfortunate that I, that I don't have a, I don't remember things all too well. So just somebody ask it again when we work on the next example, or if I remember it, hopefully, um, and then we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but let me go ahead and see here if I can kind of fix a few things out a little bit more. Um, kind of want to bring this neck out a bit more too.
Okay. I think we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave it nice and simple for this one. Um, but there you go. We've got here this rounded portrait face. Uh, again, utilizing a lot of rounded shapes for these designs, but also keeping it nice and organic. Um, let's see here. Uh, ZH Chris, thank you for the follow. Shenanigans as well. Thanks for the follow. Um, you love my eyes? What? Like the ones I'm drawing? <laughs> you mean that one? Um... No, there's no, the ad breaks happen in the half hour mark. Um, how's it going, Tropicana? Welcome back in. I'm just a junior sophomore year, but the plan is eventually to pivot into art once I'm in the tech industry with a job. Ah, nice, nice. Okay. Have I drawn Ichigo? Oh, you know, I, I did like two years ago. I did draw, I did draw Ichigo, but it's been a while. Um, and it wasn't even in my style. So I guess the answer is no. Not in the style that I did my One Piece characters. You guys want to see that really quick? For those of you who don't know what um, what they might be talking about, where is that? We did this during my subathon break where I drew, um, I drew One Piece characters in my style. So this was Luffy in my style, uh, Zoro in my style. Uh, we don't talk about this guy, and this is Sage uh, from Valorant in my style, um, just for fun. I really like the Luffy one. That one was my favorite personal, uh, personal favorite one that we did. But yeah, we don't talk about baby Sinclair. <laughs> oh man, not baby Sinclair. Uh, let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. One more, uh, one more detail right here. And then I think we'll be good to, let me actually just put this one away. There you go. Uh, let me add a few little pockets of ambient occlusion. And I think we should be good here with, uh, with this drawing. Oh wait, glasses. We forgot his glasses. Never forget the glasses. Uh, let's do that on a new layer just so that in case we mess up, <laughs> you never know. Um, never know if you mess up. Yo, crystal clear. Thank you so much. Looks good. Thank you. Dark bites. Appreciate that. Um, let's see here. Can you draw each ago? I want to see that one of these days I'm down. I'm down to draw some uh, bleach fan art for you guys. I love bleach. Bleach was the, I would argue that bleach was the first anime that really got me thinking about the art style when I was younger. And when I first saw Bleach, I was like, yo, this looks nice. That was the first anime that made me actually think of, think of anime and cartoons as art and not just something you consume. Um, so I, I owe, I owe a lot to Bleach when it comes to, uh, wanting to become an artist <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, we're going to add the, the bad guy glasses in a bit. I'll do that right now. Okay. Mm, reform it, change the perspective a little bit, move this one over a little bit more. Like so there you go. Nice and easy. Uh, and let's go in here and add some more details there. Uh, let's see here. Mm, ba -ba -ba -ba. Best thing to do if you're just starting out with art is to know the important tools like AI as well as learn our skills. You'll, you'll need both in the future. I think, um, yes and no. I think 
AI will probably be utilized in the future for sure. And artists will probably incorporate it. But I think it's not going to be necessarily in the same ways that AI is being utilized now. Like I think people nowadays are using AI specifically for the generation of an end product, right? So you're using AI to generate some images. Maybe you tweak it a little bit, but that's usually the final result. Um, if anything, where I might see AI um, come in handy is through um, quicker searching for things like references or ideation processes, um, maybe a variation of thumbnailing. Uh, like if I were to use AI in my workflow moving forward, it would be because I want to, gra I want to grab certain types of references and images um, that I can't really find that easily through Google. Um, but again, I only want to be able to use that if under the assumption that AI is actually being ethically trained and not in exploiting my fellow artists. Because if that's what's happening, then in that case, I don't really want to utilize AI until we get to that kind of state. But I do think there is, again, potential for AI to be utilized and leveraged by the very same artists uh, today. And so I don't think that being I don't think that pursuing art is a not a good endeavor. I know there's a lot of people who come into my streams and ask like, oh, um, you know, oh, is it too late for me to be an artist? Should I, what's the point of being an artist anymore? And personally, I always tell you guys this all the time. I hope this is what I always say, right? Um, at the end of the day, AI as a tool now, if everybody can do it, if anybody can go on there and type words out and generate an image, it doesn't actually make it that much of a valuable skill because it's such an entry level ability to do so that I think in the future, in the long run, the people who will really leverage and utilize AI to its best abilities will actually be those people who also understand art, understand the fundamentals like composition, lighting, how, what interesting character designs look like and stuff, and then incorporate those techniques and stuff that you already know how to do and then have AI be a tool like anything else, right? That's what I always tell people. Um, so, so personally speaking, I would say just keep focusing on your craft, focus on your art. Um, you'll be, you'll be all right. You'll be okay. Um, but in the long run, I think at the end of the day, artists will still be the ones that will create. We just need to, um, keep working on our skills and our fundamentals and then treat stuff, treat that stuff as a tool. Because if, if you take a look at the artists now, quote unquote artists who use AI, right? The, the, or I should say in general, the people who use AI at, to create art, if you took away the AI, can those people still create? And the answer is no. Right. And so we, as artists, you know, we can create without the use of AI and stuff. And if we have those things as well, it could also be something that we can use. And yeah, I think, you know, again, this is just my take. I'm not a, I'm not necessarily a proponent for AI, nor am I a advocate or, or nor am I a opponent of it as a general concept. I think as it's being used right now in practice, that is not something I support. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with just how um, how, how these data sets came to be, how a lot of the, uh, the programs and the algorithms were trained and stuff and uh, all the artists who are being exploited. But I think as a concept, I think it could work well. It might not work well. And at the end of the day, I don't think it should change your prospects of whether or not you, uh, want to be an artist. Um, and again, um, I say these things because I used to be a software engineer. I worked in the tech industry for about five years, and I also studied a lot of AI when I was in college, but I also work professionally as an artist now. And so I, th I see things on both sides and I see, you know, I obviously see where all my artist friends are frustrated, but I also see where, you know, the potential is there to incorporate this on a regular uh, basis and how it can overall uh, improve some certain workflows when it comes to being an artist. Uh, but there you go. That is my take on AI guys. I think we've spoken a lot about it. So <laughs> hopefully that's okay with you guys. I know that we always talk about it somehow, somehow, some way AI ends up creeping up on this conversation, you know, but take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm an artist. It's what I chose to do. So 
If I were to choose a side, I'd probably choose the artist side. But I would like to think that there's going to be a time and place where um, we'll see we'll see AI utilized in a much more ethical and more uh, beneficial way to everybody. Okay, but there you go. This was our little drawing of um, this was our little drawing here of this guy with a little bit more of a rounded style, right? So just I'm just going to show you guys a few kind of the things first. Let me first of all duplicate this. Uh, multiply this, set a little bit of a 40%, seems pretty good. And then we'll do a quick little motion blur here just to make those lines extra crispy. Um, and I'll do a quick little colorway here just so that we can, you know, look at it a little bit more. Um, and then we'll be good to go and to move on to the next example. Um, that has been an issue in the internet and platform in, in general. E yes. Um, I do agree that AI has a tendency to be exploitive uh, with how it's being trained, which is why when I initially heard about AI and then when I heard a lot about the problems that people had about AI, I was genuinely shocked, actually. Um, I was genuinely shocked about how the developers who were producing things like Mid Journey and stuff didn't even think about how they were sourcing their data. Because one of the things I learned when I was studying artificial intelligence and machine learning and stuff was about how important it was to to be mindful of your data and and you know think about the ethics of coding and stuff. But I I guess when they were developing oh hold on my bad my iPad crashed um, let me fix that real quick. But I guess when they were developing uh, these programs. They just maybe didn't care about artists or didn't think that art was something that was worth copywriting or something to be concerned about. Or maybe they were just interested in money. They just wanted a profit, you know? And so they were like, eh, it's okay. We can just, you know, let's just make money first and figure out the problems later. But let me go ahead and see if I can fix this really quick. I don't know what happened there with my, uh, with my iPad. Apologize, guys. That's maybe better than before. Okay. Do you guys see the iPad? Yeah, you see it? Okay. There you go. Um You guys can see it? Okay. Dude, this is dude, AI is trying to stop us. <laughs> They're trying to stop me. They're holding me back. They're like we must stop this man. Yo, big big tech is after me, guys. Oh shoot. The tech bros are here in the chat right now as we speak. It's over. They can't shut us down. We're staying strong. <laughs> um, but anyways, that's uh, that's a little bit about my take on AI. Um, I probably don't have any more takes on it, so I will refrain from saying anything else about AI just because, again, I don't know. I think I think we we end up talking about the, this topic pretty regularly on my streams, and my my take on it doesn't change all too often. So I just want to you know, let you guys know, like if I have a new take, if I have a new opinion about it, I will definitely share with you guys. But otherwise that's all I have to say. Um, and I don't think that'll change for a bit. Um, but if you guys do have any other questions, um, let me know in the chat, by the way, um, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, let's see here. Thanks for the follow to run, run Dodo, also X bunny and um, everyone else coming in here today. I know there was a question earlier about motion blur. So why do I use motion blur? Um, motion blur basically gives you that subtle, um, line art effect that you would get from a traditional animation style that utilizes cell shading. Um, so you'll see this all the time in anime. Um, they'll have like these kind of softened out, um, these softened out lines and stuff. So that's what I usually utilize. Um, that's what I use uh, that for. Primarily for uh, that cell shaded look. Let me actually, here's what I'll do. Um, instead of getting rid of it, I'm going to lighten it out and color that out. OK, 
Okay. I'll I'll figure out the eyes in a bit. Okay. Um, so right now I'm just using, just using grays because I'm too lazy to color. Um, <laughs> I don't really want to color today. Uh, what did I have for food today? Uh, nothing, nothing yet. I mean, it's all, it's, it's 9 a.m. in the morning, guys. <laughs> I, first thing I do in my day is stream on Twitch. That's literally my morning routine. So, um, I had some water. Yeah, I guess that, that counts. We had some water today. It was decent. Good water. Does that count? Okay, almost done here. And then I think we'll move on to the next example. I just wanted to have like a nice clean portrait before we moved on, you know? There you go. All right, but there you go. First example out the way here. Uh, we've got here some rounded forms. All right, looking nice and crispy. And uh, yeah, did you draw the base sketch of the head already, like the circle to get the structure right? Oh yeah, so if you guys want to see how the base uh, sketch looks like, uh, let's go take a look at that really quick. So this was the colors, this was the this was the base sketch. So <laughs> very, very rough, all right? Um, there you go, very rough sketch for the character design, just to kind of get some rough idea for the shape. Then I added in some of the liner, then I added in some color. And uh, there you go. That's kind of usually my process here for drawing these things out. But let me go ahead and kind of highlight again some of the shape design that we're looking at, right? So we're looking at here uh, this rounded form of the glasses. We're looking at the rounded kind of shapes here of the face. So even though the shape of the face is going to be a little bit tapered, we still have a little bit of softness there um, with how the shape is overall. So it's a nice kind of rounded shape there with the cheekbones, all of that stuff. We get a nice exposure of the silhouette there of the ear, which I think helps out a lot. Um, we're also getting some roundness here from the earrings. Uh, there's also some roundness here from the overall shape of the head, right? So all of these little kind of components here together can kind of help showcase some of the features of this character, which gives it that rounder motif. So when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a round looking character design. Uh, but there you go. So we've knocked out, we've knocked out that one over there. And I think we'll move on now to the next one. And for the next two examples, I'll actually go over the face and I'll draw these out more structurally into detail. Uh, since I know a lot of you guys have asked me how I actually draw some of the structure. So the the first one, the first one that we covered, I kind of just sped run it. <laughs> As you guys saw, we kind of just ran through it pretty quickly. Um, but let me go ahead now and let me move him down, I guess. And let's shrink that down a little bit. And let me put away this reference and we'll start drawing this girl right here. And I think for this girl, hmm, let's see where we want to go with this one. I think for this one, maybe we're going to go for a, like a boxy look. I'm going to move, I'm going to move him here and we'll put this one away for now. The cheekbones made of steel. Uh, good old cheekbones. Yeah. Man's got the, the cheekbones. So I'm thinking for this one, I want to go for maybe a more uh, square shape. So let's see how we can take this character, even though she's a you know feminine character and stuff, 
we can still utilize a you know boxy square design so not all characters that are you know rectangular or boxy are going to be male characters you can also leverage here um you can also leverage here some of these uh on female characters as well all right so let's go ahead now and i'll jump right into drawing out this reference here and let's see where we go so first thing i'm going to do for those of you who are watching is i'm going to go over here um, some of the again basic approaches that i do when it comes to drawing out the face now for something like this i actually have two different approaches of how i draw faces um, the more common one that i use for like my everyday work is i just kind of go in here and draw out the rough silhouette of the face and i'm utilizing some of my understanding of things like the loomis method and all that stuff to kind of just rough out a placement here for the face uh, like so you can kind of do it like that um and then i'll go here find that center line like right here uh find where i want to place the back of the ear like so and then this is kind of how i do it now for those of you who are like beginners i would instead recommend you do something like this where let's say you take the volume of the of the cranium here so the volume of the skull right and from this volume of the skull uh what i would actually recommend is let's say we chop out the sides right here imagine we took this this is a this is a a, a, a sphere not a cylinder uh, but this is going to be a sphere like here with the center line here that sphere right let's go ahead and chop out the sides right here because we have here the side plane of the face uh, we'll do that on both sides okay so we're taking this sphere and we're chopping it out like so and then from here what i like to do is i like to actually visualize now um from here there's, we're gonna there's gonna be like a center line that goes down this way and from there we're gonna go all the way down here and we're gonna figure out here how far down we want our chin to be now usually what i like to do is i like to kind of go in here find out where i want the hairline to be first so from the hairline to the brows there's going to be this distance which will actually be about the same distance from the brows to the nose and then roughly from there we'll have our distance from the nose all the way down to the chin so this is kind of uh the standard loomis method that i have kind of modified for my own purposes but you can kind of use that to get yourself started right so here i'm going to go draw the jaw now all the way down here and then we can kind of go wrap around the form now keep in mind here that i always consider these things as three-dimensional forms so don't think of this as just drawing a circle and a triangle i mean you could do that but i feel like oftentimes a circle and a triangle approach ends up making your characters look and feel a little flat right so i always tell you guys um think about the overall shape and stuff and think about the overall volume that you're seeing okay um, is there a place in the discord where we can post our own versions of these? Oh, yeah post them in the art share section I'd love to see them if you guys are following along today Please feel free to share. I I am super down to take a look at what you guys are coming up with uh, The Joel drawings uh, remind you of season three boondocks. Heck. Yeah, I mean I love um, Some of my favorite artists uh, LaShawn Thomas who worked on the boondocks and stuff um, as well as a few artists who I also study from oftentimes um they they do incredible work and i think in many ways the boondocks highly influenced styles from legend of korra um from avatar so you can kind of see some of that but i'm also i mean the boondocks also uh referenced styles from full metal alchemist and all that stuff um art roast maybe maybe we'll do an art roast um but let's go in here and so this is again my basic structure right now what I like to do with my version here is I kind of like to find that center line that we've established and then I'm going to go in and kind of find where I want those cheekbones to be. So the cheekbones, you can think of it as just an arch, like, right, like so, like that. Um, go in here like this. You can kind of find that arch going this way as well. And so now we have like a structure here for the face, right? Um, and then here, uh, when it comes to placing in the eyes, I like to kind of just go in and what i like to do is figure out how long do i want the brows to be so let's say i want the brows to be this long uh maybe like that right and all i'm going to do is i'm going to find that triangular relationship there the triangular relationship there of the end of the brows where i want the end of the eyes to be and where i want the ends of the nose to be and right here the eyes i usually place them about halfway 
okay so you can place the eyes about halfway on the face from here to here and that's usually about it there you go um, and that's kind of generally how I think about the face again when I when I when I normally draw these things out like I draw these characters I'm not actually mapping out every single detail like this um, because I've already I think practiced this for a while and so I know but this is kind of what I would generally recommend and actually um, I would actually make this one a little bit bigger um, Maybe more like that. Uh, but anyways, that's kind of the overall idea. Okay, so there you go. Um, we'll do a few more examples of that where you guys can see it a little bit more. But let's kind of just use this. And I'm going to use it very, very loosely here. The most important thing about that approach is really just understanding, um, understanding where you want to place your facial features. So for this character here, um, let's kind of go in and maybe make more of a boxy structure, uh, a boxy approach. So let me go in here, add some of the details, and then we'll see where we go from here. Um, someone's asking where the reference is from. I got this reference from Pinterest. So if you're asking me who this particular uh, character is or this person is, I have no clue, uh, unfortunately. That is oftentimes the problem with Pinterest um, is you can find a lot of good pictures, but oftentimes they don't label the pictures. And so you don't necessarily know what you're looking at or who, which, who the artist is or whatever. That's like my biggest issue with Pinterest. But all right, let's go in and let's start kind of, uh, I'm just going to be placing in some of those features again and using those landmarks that I have here, uh, for the eyes. There you go. Maya Hawk? I don't know who that is, but maybe. Um, can we use um can we use shapes for every facial feature? Um yeah, you can if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but you can. Definitely. Actually, hold on. Let me show you guys an example of where I think I used mm, Here's an example where I used a boxy motif for almost everything on here. <laughs> so I gave him a boxy nose, right? Boxy nose, um, boxy brows, boxy eyes, boxy lips, boxy ears, boxy head, right? So you can, you can, you can go as far, um, as you want with, with the boxy shapes, you know, I also added in these boxy earrings like so, so. That's your cousin? Damn. <laughs> so you can if you want to, um, but again, you don't have to, right? Um, he looks like secure, <laughs> security for a fashion show. He could be. Definitely. Um, thank you for the follows, by the way, too. Uh, Lolly Bell, uh, Rune Dudo, and uh, Noter, Noter B Pie for you. Noter B pie for you. Thank you for the follows. Um, let's see here. Also, hey, 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 JK, thanks for the follow as well. You think it's Winona Ryder? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it could be. Um, no derby pie for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just, dude, I was struggling. Um, but yeah, let's go in here and start drawing out the rest of the facial features. Now, again, um, I'm going to be utilizing the structure that we have, but you can, you can mix and match. You can change it up however you see fit. So don't feel like you have to, um, don't feel like you have to utilize this technique if you feel like it doesn't make as much sense, um, to you and your style. But this is just kind of how I draw heads and how I've learned to draw heads from various uh, studying, I guess, of different things. Can you have a beanie? Yeah, you can get a virtual beanie. Grab a beanie out here.
Okay, um, but you can kind of see here I'm laying out all these features, right? Laying out all these features and stuff. And from these features, we can kind of go in afterwards and we're going to add all the details. Uh, but because we're going to go for a more boxy look for her, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if we can kind of uh, incorporate some of the face shapes here, but also kind of warp it out just a little bit so that it's a little bit more on the boxier end. Uh, let's see here. Any tips for a beginner can't seem to get shapes in alignment right, especially without a reference. Um, any tips for a beginner? Yeah, so um, again, what I would recommend is understanding some of the basic shapes. So we, kind of what we, we talked about earlier with the um, with the example that I, that, I, that I just did for the face, I kind of use these general guidelines uh, to help me get an understanding of how the face in general works. And then from there, you can start to go in and, you know, incorporate these things. So for example, right now, I actually technically don't need the reference anymore um, because I've already used, I've already established all the guidelines that I need. So for example, um, I know that the ears are going to go right here, right? Because I have that guideline. Um, I know where the nose should be. Uh, maybe we'll actually make it a little bit lower. Maybe we'll go like this. So um, having those general guidelines and placements can actually help out a lot. Um, and if anything, that's kind of what I recommend instead. Um, and again, for those of you who are interested, I actually do have a boot camp uh, out here, guys, on my YouTube channel. So let me go ahead and type that out for you guys. Uh, oops, my keyboard is... Hold on. Um... Um, I do have a YouTube channel out here. And on my YouTube channel, I basically teach... Uh, art on Twitch. So I have a 30 day boot camp right now live on Twitch. We're currently on day 29, but you can actually watch all the previous days of my boot camp um, on my YouTube channel. They're edited versions as well. And uh, yeah, um, I cover faces pretty extensively for the first couple of days of those of the boot camp. So you'll be able to kind of see how I approach drawing faces uh, that way. Um, but for the sake of the demo, I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys the reference. So that way you guys can kind of follow along. Um, but again, um, as, as long as you have the general placement of everything, technically speaking, um, you can move away from the reference. And that's kind of what I encourage people to do is use the reference, not as something that you have to copy, but more so something that you leverage here and there as you start to draw, you know, whatever it is you want to draw. Um, oh, thanks for all the follows today, too. Ilusu, uh, Fibonoski, uh, Avart, Avarast666, uh, W Doodoo, and everybody else coming in here. Uh, glad to have you guys on my channel today. Um, but all right, let me let me go ahead and speed up on this one so that way we have we can make sure we have time on that final uh, that final uh, head shape that I wanted to tackle with you guys. Uh, when it comes to drawing uh, lips and stuff, I usually just draw the the corners of the lips because that's going to be the darkest section. Uh, and then uh, depending on the style you're going for, I'll denote some of the upper and lower portions of the lips there. Um, and hey, well, welcome back in, Peter. I'll thank you for the follows too, guys. Also, guys, really quick, um, I do run ads on my stream every hour and one's going to be running right about now. Um, so if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. Uh, they help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. But if you don't want to see any ads, uh, do consider subscribing or using a Prime sub out here. Uh, but either way, thank you for your support. And I hope to see you guys after the um, after the ad break. And hey, how's it going, lady? 
Lady Glitter. But yeah, I would say for this one, we're going to go for a more boxy shape. And a lot of that boxiness is actually just being incorporated here um, in the overall shape there of the face. But when we actually go into adding in details, like let's say, uh, let's say for the eyes and for the hair and stuff, we're going to go in and also include some of those things out as well too. Now, again, this is more of like a realistic style. So we wanted to go for a more stylized look. Uh, we definitely could. And maybe we'll do that for the uh, for the final uh, the final face that we have uh, down. We haven't shown it yet, but yeah. Um. Oh, thank you, Desi Daddy. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, thank you for the follow too, Jen Hayes, nineteen seventy. Welcome in. Um. Okay, so let's go in now, and let me add in some general structure for the for the hair. And I think for me too, this is where we can really start to incorporate some of that shape design, right? So. I'm going to go for more of a blocky silhouette here for this character. Uh, maybe we'll do something, something like this, where we're getting some of those blocky shapes. And again, I'm going to just draw out the rough silhouette and we'll kind of go into actually adding in the details um, afterwards. But right now, just kind of uh, getting in here, loosening up to some of the lines. And overall, just focusing on the shapes that we're trying to aim for uh, and, and what we're trying to convey for this character. So let me kind of do that. Uh, and then for those of you who uh, wanted my hair tutorial stuff, uh, we have a video for hair tutorials. Usually the first step that I'm going for when it comes to hair is I'm just blocking in the basic shapes that I'm looking for. Um, and then from there going into actually adding details afterwards on top. So right now we're just keeping it super simple. Um, just blocking in the, the structure, the face, the hair. Keeping it nice and uh, basic. Okay, um, and then from here, let's go in and let me just add some quick clothing and then I'll go into actually adding the details and stuff for this character. All right, um, are you guys back from the ad break, by the way? Thank you for the follow up. Uh, PJJ2858. Uh, let me know in the chat, guys, if you are back from the ad break, so that way I can, uh, um, yeah, I forgot to press the ad break button there. Um, hey, how's it going? Little Miss Creep. Also, uh, Lamasivers. Hey, welcome back in. Okay, so we're back from the ad break. Sweet. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, so let's go back on here and let's now talk about actually adding in uh, let's actually talk a bit now about adding in some of the details. So for those of you coming back in from the ad break, welcome back in guys. Um, thank you for sticking around. Um, but let's go ahead now and I'm going to just kind of lower the opacity. Here's our rough again, the rough mannequin that we had. This is not normally how I draw it. So I'm going to try to go in now and I'm going to kind of go in and maybe we'll warp out some of the features here and we'll also go in and start adding out some of the structure that we want for this, uh, for this girl here. But again, um, overall, what I'm looking for here is trying to really evoke some of those shape designs that we talked about earlier. So here we want to go for a more boxy look. So let's kind of go in now and start adding in some of those boxy features um, in certain areas. So maybe let me flip the canvas real quick just to make sure I like where it's looking. And then we'll go in and start tackling some of that. Cool. Hey, how's it going, uh, Kava? Uh, but yeah, for those of you who are uh, coming in here for the first time, welcome into the Kasem crew. Uh, my name is Kasem. I'm going to put the reference away. 
Um, but yeah, my name is Kesem, and I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to all things related to character design. And I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, prepping to work as a character designer on shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So, if you guys are interested in some free art education, or you guys just like... I don't know, anime, animation, or you want to hang out with my dog who is over there. Um, do leave a follow out here on Twitch, and I hope you guys enjoy uh, today's stream. My dog is, my dog is KO'd today, sleeping. This morning, I, but fun fact, I caught my dog sleeping on the couch. He's not allowed to sleep on the couch, but I found him this morning... He got caught. He slept on the couch last night. I was like, bro, naughty dog, but it's okay. We can't blame him. He's too cute. Uh, thanks for the follow too. Skies ahead. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's okay. We let it slide on occasion, but generally he's not allowed to sleep on the couch. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this one kind of in the um maybe in the kind of uh we'll see if I'll do it like in the Castlevania style. Um buy him his own couch no i know for a fact that the moment i buy him a couch he's not even gonna he's not gonna sleep on it you guys have seen my dog you know you know the kind of shenanigans that he does the moment i buy him a couch he's gonna be like eh i don't want it <laughs> i bought him a nice bed and he does he only sleeps on that bed um when i'm not streaming no joke he will actually lay on that bed guys just not when i'm streaming on twitch it's actually baffling. He always does it. Uh, wow, thanks for all the follows today. Uh, Kalu, Pseudosaurus, uh, Luan, and everyone else coming in here. Um, welcome in, guys. Um, if you guys are following in today, um, I would love to know how you guys came across the stream today. What brought you guys here? Uh, thank you again for all the support and all the all the people coming in here leaving follows. Thank you so much. Yeah, did you come in from the from the recommended section for my YouTube channel? Uh, was there a raid earlier that I might have just missed? Let me know in the chat. Um, let's see. Does he get zoomies? Yeah, he gets some zoomies. Also, Zedric, welcome back in. Hopefully, you're doing well. Um, you saw me on recommended, huh? Sheesh. That's cool. Shout out to recommended. All right, but so right now for this one, I'm just going in and I'm again, uh, I'm, I'm adding in some kind of uh, features here to kind of make her look a little bit more boxy than maybe what the reference might have. Um, but again, these are all stylistic choices and you guys might go at it at a different way than I would go at it, which actually reminds me, let me add a little, uh, my signature nose bridge touch there. There you go. Um, let me go back here on this one now. Oh, recommended huh? a lot of recommendeds out here. Um, I saw what I, I once saw a video of a spider reacting to the air sensor of phone camera. Oh, maybe, maybe my dog can feel the focus of the camera. You know what? That, that sounds actually pretty crazy, but I believe it. <laughs> I believe my dog knows when I'm live. I'm pretty sure he knows. Um, came from your game from your gaming twitch channel oh speaking of my gaming twitch channel um we actually got affiliate on that channel uh yesterday so thank you guys for helping get my secondary accounts 
um, affiliate affiliated. Here's my gaming stream. If you guys are interested, um, I don't, I don't, um, I actually don't draw or not. I'm sorry. I don't game on this channel mostly because, uh, this channel is purely dedicated to art and stuff. So apologies for those of you who are like, Oh, when do you play games? Not on this channel, but I do play on my old channel. So yeah. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and, uh, I want to, sp I want to speed up on this one just a tad bit with you guys, because I want to, I want to get into the next thing. Um, but actually, you know, this might actually be a good time to answer that question. So, um, if you guys have any questions in the chat, do feel free to ask them. Um, feel free to ask questions out here. I know there was a question earlier, so we can talk about that while I go ahead and draw some of the features out here for this character. Um, Due to the fact that dogs have a limited ability to differentiate color, they are also unable to see infrared waves with their eyes alone. Ah, I see. Maybe not then. Um, yeah, so I know there was a question earlier. Do you guys remember what the question was? It was, uh, hmm, let me think. Uh, someone remembers a question. Feel free to ask it again. Um, am I going to do an expression stream for art? Like how to draw, how to draw face expressions? Um, if you're asking if I if I if I'm gonna do that, probably I will in the future. But I've actually already done a bunch of those on my YouTube channel. So if you guys go to my YouTube channel and if you search up uh, face expressions and how to draw dynamic face expressions and stuff like that, that's also on my YouTube channel. We've actually covered um, a few of those face expression sheets and stuff um, over there. So yeah. Answer is in the future. Will I be doing more? Uh, yes, for sure. I'll be doing. I'll definitely be doing more facial expressions, uh, but I will also be. Um, I, I also already have some. If you guys want to get a head start, have I ever played Castlevania? I have not played Castlevania. Actually, I've only. I only know of the of the show series. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start drawing an old Wacom tablet. How do you go about it? How how would I go about drawing on an old Wacom tablet? I mean, I think uh, in general drawing... Uh, I think in general drawing uh, digitally is less about the tablet that you use, though it can make a difference. Um, but I think it's more about just getting familiar with the software that you're using, whether that's going to be Photoshop, CSP... Um, you know, uh, what else? Krita, maybe even painter to Psy. So I would say, um, just focus on the basic tools. That's really the, the main thing that I would recommend. Um, yikes. What is this chat? Look, we got a, we got a bot out here. Sky warp. Yikes. That's embarrassing. Don't click on that weird link guys. I mean, he doesn't even work. The links are banned out here, but we got to ban you, bro. Ah, that's cringe. That's cringe. Wait, Lamasaverse, you banned the wrong person. <laughs> oh shoot. Sky uh Skyward got banned, but Ollie Rex also got um collateral damage. Can you unban Ollie Rex? <laughs> Ollie Rex. <laughs> nah, you're good. You're good. Collateral damage out here. Ollie Rex, are you back in here? Hello, Ollie Rex. Are you okay? You got accidentally banned. Um, the mods, the mods got you. Preemptive. They knew, they knew something was up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was just accidental. Uh, question about hair. I've been practicing with pencil paper and I'm having an issue with doing the shadowing for hair, talking behind the ear or for a short uh, bob hairstyle. Um, again, I would say... Just um, for a lot of these things, whether it is hair or uh, facial structures or whatever, the best thing you can really do is focus on the basic shapes. And then from those basic shapes, uh, start to think about how the lighting and stuff is applied to those basic shapes, whether that's going to be hair 
um, the face, clothing, whatever have you, you know. Um, but we'll talk a bit about that, actually, because we're going to be covering some interesting shapes right now. Oh, also, for those of you guys who are interested in the previous days of the boot camp that I've covered, here's a quick little walkthrough. Um, so for those of you interested in clothing, I covered on day 28 here how to do clothing folds for your characters. Uh, day 27, I showed you guys how to do action poses for your characters. Uh, day 26, I showed you guys how to do sitting poses for your characters. Day 25 was dynamic poses, um, how to do perspective from imagination, um, how to do dynamic perspective. And you guys can kind of see here, all of these topics, again, are part of my boot camp, and we go through more of the anatomical stuff as well on my earlier days of the boot camp. So you guys who are interested in some of those things, um, again, you can grab these all on my YouTube channel, guys, um, for those of you interested. Um, some advice for a rookie. I mean, with the iPad, I would say personally, I think the best software for drawing on the iPad has to be uh, Procreate, but, you know, I think each to their own. I would say Procreate is my personal favorite and one that I would always recommend to anybody. Um, but if you don't want to use Procreate, there's also um, CSP is technically also available on on the iPad as well as a, I think Adobe Sketch is, is also on there. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of uh, a bunch of different ones. Uh, Fresco too. Yeah, Fresco is another one. There you go. Um, let's see here. Do you, do you post all your videos on YouTube live VODs? Um, so my, yes. So all of my videos on YouTube are going to be edited versions of my stream. So if you guys enjoy my streams, my YouTube channel will have the same content, but actually a little bit cleaner, um, a little bit shorter. So that way you guys can follow along with the tutorials and stuff, um, that we have over there. Um, but yes, my, my YouTube channel basically is all the tutorials I cover out here, um, but re-uploaded for, for my YouTube viewers and for those of you who are watching here on Twitch, but maybe can't stick around for the whole uh, live stream session and stuff. Uh, thank you for the follow too, by the way. Boss, boss Mon, number one. Mm, let's see. Also, Willow Grove Girl, thanks for the follow. Um, how do I know what background to do for each drawings? I never know what to put as a background, so it's always blank. Oof. Um, that's a little, that's kind of a tough question because it's a question more about what you want to do. Um, but I will say backgrounds can come in many variations. So if you want to draw a, re, like a, an actual environment background, you can do that. If you want to just add some color, some abstract stuff, you can do that. Um, but I do think it varies on your style and what you prefer. Um, but I would say take a look at what other artists are doing, see what they're cooking up, and then try to incorporate that into your next illustration and piece, you know. Um, do I find joy in teaching? Yes, I actually do. I actually really enjoy teaching a lot. It's, this is my second job on Twitch, or second job that I do. So streaming on Twitch, if you guys don't know, is like my part-time job because I really enjoy teaching and I just enjoy hanging out with you guys. Uh, my full-time job is I do studio work. So, um, again, I, I work for the studio that made uh, Castlevania. So that's what I normally work on um, outside of these hours. But I do enjoy teaching a lot. It's something that I find, I don't know, it, 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 as you said, it, it brings me joy. And I think it's, it's nice for me to know that I'm helping somebody out um, out here. Do I agree with the curve and straight line thing for shape design? Oh, heck yeah. Curve versus straight, that is something that exists in nature. Whether or not as a design principle, it, it just normally exists in nature. So let me show you guys um, a good example of that. But like when you draw, here's lean beef patty here. Look at this. Look at how the human body works, right? Curved shape here for the deltoids. Contrasted with a curved shape here on the tricep straight here for the stretched out bicep, right? Then here you have a curvature for the uh, the ridge muscles. Then you have a straight here for the tendon of the tricep. Then you have here the curvature for the, um, for the flexor muscles. Then you have a straight here uh, for the wrist bone. Curves versus straight, 
they just exist in nature. That's, uh, that's not, I mean, yes, it's a shape design principle, but it also just exists naturally. So incorporating natural curvatures and versus straights is just a good way in general, um, a good thing you can do in general when it comes to your designs. 100%. Great question. Um, I just, uh, first time using Procreate, but I don't know uh, why, but it feels unnatural. Um, okay, here's what I would recommend. For those of you who just got Procreate and stuff, I would actually recommend you guys check out my brushes on Gumroad. There are some free ones on there. So if you guys want to try the free brushes first, you can try those free brushes. Um, and then if you feel like you like them, you can check out the... Um, you can actually check out the uh, the paid versions as well. But the brushes that I make are primarily brushes um, that try to kind of have that same similar traditional style because I used to be a traditional artist. I love doing traditional art. Um, and so I wanted to have something that felt kind of similar to that traditional feel. But again, there are free versions there. So you guys can check that out. Uh, why do you always say studio that made Castlevania, but never say the name? Because not a lot of people know the studio. Um, I work for powerhouse animation. That is the studio that made Castlevania, but I can guarantee you there are more people who know the name Castlevania than they do know the name powerhouse. So yeah, that is why. But again, it's not that I'm hiding the studio. It's more just like people don't know it. And as someone who, you know, is a content creator who, you know, tries to, tell you guys what I work on, it makes more sense for me to say I work for the studio that made Castlevania. Does that make sense? It's a good question. Like there are, for example, um, a lot of animes that people probably don't know the studio name of, right? Like some of you might not be able to know what studio animates Naruto or what, what studio animated Full Metal Alchemist, right? Um, but you guys know the shows. And I think that to me is more important. Um, today, guys, yeah, for those of you coming in, we're covering shape design today. So we're covering here how I think about adding in shapes for my character design. So we went for a, a more rounded shape here. And now for this one, we're doing more of a boxy shape. So um, what are the free brushes mainly for? I mean, it's up to you. I think the free brushes are brushes. It's been a while since I've seen them, but I would say they probably incorporate, uh, brushes for sketching. Some you can use for coloring as well. Um, the paid brushes that I have, those are going to have everything. So from, from, uh, those are going to be labeled as like line art brushes and so forth. So you guys can take a look at those as well too. You feel like powerhouse is from a horror movie. It kind of, yeah, I can, I can see some of that. All right, but we're going to go in here, guys. And, I, and again, um, what I'm doing right now is I'm basically blocking in uh, the structures for the hair. And notice how for the hair, even, even hair, we can utilize some uh, boxy shape designs here. So you can really go and honestly, anything can be utilized as shape design and help convey more about the character and stuff. I might be exaggerating a little bit here with the hair, but that's okay. Because again, this is, you know, part of the process here. I feel like if I were to make this into an animated character, I probably wouldn't make it as, as uh, complicated and as boxy. I probably would keep some of the, the shape design simple a little bit more, but, uh, we're going to go in here and I'm just going to kind of uh, add some subtle overlaps and then we're going to add in some of the details in a bit. Uh, I think we're going to have the ears that go kind of like this, but also I think her hair, uh, her hair strands are going to go this way. So, um, let's see here. Do I know vampire D? Yeah. Do you mean the anime? Yeah, I, I know it. hundred percent. Um, let's see here. 
pretty much the only ones you use. They're, wait, my brushes are the only brushes you use? Nice, nice. Um, let me see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -um. I like the tutorial streams like this a lot, but how, do you do you ever do full illustration streams where you work through an entire composition? Uh, that's a good question. Sometimes I do, but not all the time because... Um, maybe during the, um, what's it called? Maybe during my next boot camp, we'll do some more kind of like full on drawings, but, um, right now, not necessarily, but yeah, maybe in the next boot camp, we'll do some more, um, some more like full drawings, though. They're not going to be like full composition drawings, like full on illustrations. It'll most likely be character designs, which is what I often work uh work on doing anyways so that'll probably be what we would do if we were to um do a more full-out illustration so i would show you guys how i design characters from end to end if that makes any sense um all right but let me go ahead guys i'm gonna speed this one up give me a quick second as i go in here and then we'll move on to the next. So I think for this character, the main thing that I wanted to showcase for her shape design uh, was really just show, it was just kind of leveraging here her hair and how her hair and the structure of her face can really start to bring about more of like a, a more boxy shape, right? So you can utilize a lot of different elements here for your designs of your characters, whether that's hair, uh, earrings, even the shape of the eyes. Like there's so many avenues to uh, to explore and utilize. And so that's kind of what I usually tell people is like, you know, focus on focus on uh, having a general motif and then start to build up off of that motif. Now, you don't have to use everything. Um, not everything has to be a box. Again, not everything has to be a circle or a triangle but having a rough idea of the key elements incorporating those shapes i think is going to be what helps make an illustration really stand out now what i'll do here is after i clean out this line um, i'm going to go ahead and just do some quick touch-ups here for the hair and maybe the eyes and the face and then i think we'll be good with this one we'll be good to move on to the next uh the next part Okay. All right, I'll add some final touches here. Um, how long do I usually stream for? So I usually stream for about three hours on uh, three hours on weekdays, and then four hours on weekends. Yeah, let me add this. Um, let me see here. Uh, I know there were a bunch of other questions, by the way. If you guys can just retype those questions in the chat, that'll be great. Uh, and then that way I can answer them. But I think there was a question earlier about, I'll, I'll ask it really quick, but or I'll, I'll answer it really quick. But there was a question about, it was a how, oh, I remember now, how I transitioned from uh, software engineering to working as an artist. And the answer that I'll give to that is, first of all, um, I want to preface that uh, before I was before I switched into doing um, art and stuff, I actually didn't draw for about six years. So there was like a whole uh, a whole period of time where I just no joke didn't draw anything, um, just not drawing at all. Um, I felt like it was too late for me to be an artist and stuff. And you guys probably, for those of you who've been here, you know this story. So I'm not gonna talk about that too much um but um the the point that i'm trying to make here is the first step for me into transitioning to doing art as a career was just learning how to draw for fun and 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 how to draw as a routine and so that was my first step and what i highly recommend to anybody who wants to maybe pivot careers or uh whatever have you uh, first step is i would highly recommend getting into the habit of just drawing regularly whether that's uh 
10 minutes every day or whatever have you, but making sure that you have a routine that you can actually kind of build off of and draw regularly from. Uh, and then I think that'll be a really good kind of baseline to, to start off with. Um, from there, um, after I started drawing more regularly, uh, that is when I decided to start looking at establishing more of my fundamental skills. And I only had maybe about an hour to two hours a day to draw, like realistically, maybe more like an hour a day because of work and, you know, life in general. Uh, but I would probably just do that, right? So I would go in and I would draw for an hour a day. I would choose a particular topic. So for like the month of, for example, the month of January, I said, I'm going to go learn anatomy, right? And so that's all I, that's all I focused on was just studying anatomy, um, learning all of those different things. And then after that, I moved on to another topic. I would say, you know what? I'm going to study perspective next. I'm going to study um, character design next. So um, having a curriculum or a structure that I set for myself was really helpful. And I highly recommend that to anybody who is, you know, trying to do a self-studying approach as well. Yeah, make sure you, you know, you have a goal plan in mind because oftentimes if you don't have a goal plan, it can feel like you are just wandering around and maybe you feel like you're putting time into your art, but you, you feel like you're not getting anywhere, right? Like how many of you guys in the chat have ever felt that way? Put an F in the chat if you've ever felt like you're kind of just sitting there one day and you're like, what am I doing with my art? Am I, am I actually getting better? Am I actually progressing? Am I doing the right thing? Why does it not feel like I'm getting anywhere, right? Should I just give up? <laughs> So I'm sure you guys know, uh, some of you are already typing F's in the chat out here. Also, Vince. Hey, how's it going, Vince? Let me give you a quick shout out. Um, thanks for coming in here. Uh, shout out, shout out. There you go. Um, figure drawing. Yeah, figure drawing is also nice to do. Um, I highly recommend it to anybody. Yeah, I'm having a good day so far. Um, we're, today we're covering how to do uh, shape design. So I'm showing you guys how to draw different types of characters and from these different characters, try to evoke different types of designs and stuff for them. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to cover out here because I feel like it's a, it's something that I think you can utilize no matter what your style is. And it's also a good way to take your art to that next level. So let's say you're like, Kasem, I've been following your streams and I've been drawing out all the... Uh, I've been doing all the anatomy lessons and stuff, but I, I want to make my art, you know, look a certain style and make them look interesting. This is one of those techniques that you can definitely utilize um, in your art. Like right now, you don't have to, you know, you can incorporate this in your workflow. And I feel like it'll, it can easily take your art to that, to that next level. Having cohesive, cohesive shape design, having, um, intentional uh, looks and feels for your character huge huge pluses you can do um but yeah everyone out here dropping the f's but i'm gonna um, right now guys i'm just kind of cleaning up here i'm just adding in some details to the design of the character just to kind of spruce it up a little bit for you guys um but for the most part i think the overall design here is already done uh, we've got here basically this character who again uses a boxy motif And so the reason why I wanted to give her a boxy look was because I wanted to show you guys that not every character who you know Not every not every square character has to be a male character even even the female characters here um, can can utilize these kind of boxy shapes and they can convey a lot of different things. So for her, maybe this character is a more like a stable character, right? She's maybe, I, I'm trying to think here what, what she could be. She could be like that one friend in the group that is, is someone you can always rely on, right? She's always there, stable, friendly, boxy shapes for this one. Um, let's see here. What do you think about arcane? Um, I like arcane. Yeah, <laughs> I like the style. Arcane is cool. Um, when creating a curriculum, let me see, uh, what exactly should you look for? Any tips to avoid feeling overwhelmed? Um, I think this is where it's really tricky because I, I think finding a curriculum for yourself oftentimes is about knowing and pacing yourself and knowing what works for you and how much time you have, which is, I think the hardest thing for anybody who wants to be a self, you know, a self-studying artist. Uh, one of the hardest things that you can do for yourself is to find a pace and a balance that you can actually hold yourself accountable to 
um, but also uh, one that you feel like will actually help you grow and achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Because I think that's where sometimes schools and uh, even online courses like the ones, um, like the ones that I do here, um, you know, I try to give you guys a general rough course so that way you guys don't feel like you're too lost, but it's always at your own pace as well too. So if, don't feel like, oh man, you have to, you have to complete all of these things in a day, you know, like that's not necessarily what I'm saying. Um, also thank you for the follow justice, Adeline scalps, absolute line and everyone else coming in here, uh, makes me think of a young George Michael, young George Michael, young George Michael, who's George Michael? <laughs> it sounds familiar. I mean, I'm sure I I'm sure if you showed me the face of the actor or told me what movie they played in, I'm sure I'd know. Um I did not get to masters yet. Um do you think we should focus on the art style we want after learning everything first or should we study according to the art style we want from the beginning? Um I think it depends. I think it, I think it depends because um I would say if you're a complete beginner do don't worry about art styles and stuff because I think that's just I don't know I think there are so many more things important than trying to copy an art style when you're a beginner uh but I would say if you've already like let's say learned a few things and you're kind of comfortable with drawing characters and stuff um, then sure, you know, learn an art style, um, try to develop your own art style, see what works for you. Though I would always tell people that art style is not necessarily something that you buy. Everyone already has an art style, but there are things you can do to study art styles and build upon what you currently have. Like that is, you know, that is definitely doable and is oftentimes what people do um, in animation. So I do this all the time. If I'm working on a project, right? Uh, for an animation project, you have to learn the style that the studio is working in, right? You can't just draw your own style for the characters. I mean, you, you could, but usually you're going to get in trouble for that. So you have to learn how to do like a different show style. You got to learn the techniques for, for doing that and studying that stuff. And I think we'll talk a little bit about that during... Um, we'll talk a little bit about that in in my next boot camp well i'll show you guys how to study other people's styles and stuff uh the guy that sings careless whisper is half of wham okay okay i see now maybe i know who you're talking about <laughs> maybe not i don't think i know it's okay um, but anyways, I think this is good for now. I, I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time on the details here because I think we do need to move on. But I hope you guys got the point here for this one um, as well. So just kind of showing you a different example of like, here's a female character. But notice how the female character also can still be utilizing these boxy shapes, right? Okay, cool. Um, let me, I'll leave it at that. Maybe it will color her out. I don't know yet. Um, she looks like Tom Holland woman version. Yeah, I can see that. But here again is the rough sketch that we did. And then here is kind of that, the general shapes are that we have uh, for this character. Not bad though. I could probably fix a few things here. Let me just do that. Okay. Just kind of liquefy it a little bit to clean it up because I'm too, I'm too lazy to actually fix it up. <laughs> so we're just going to use liquefy on what we currently have. And I think that should be solid.
Cool. All right. Good enough for me. Um, let's see here. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll answer some more questions later, but I wanted to go over one more example with you guys before we, uh, before we wrap things up. So here is, um, another head that we drew. Nice. We drew two heads. We got a boxy head. We got a round head here. Let's do now a, um, a more kind of sharp angle head. And I'm actually going to show you guys a reference picture that actually doesn't, I wouldn't even say it's uh, she's a triangular character, but we can turn it into a triangular character, which is I think the point of today's, uh, this example here. So we have here this reference of this final girl here. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys how I would take this drawing here um, and try to turn it into a more of a triangular character and we'll probably utilize uh, we'll probably utilize some shape design and stuff to kind of get it going and get it a little bit more interesting. All right. All right, but let's get this one. Um, let's go ahead and draw on this one. So uh, again, for this one, we're going to go for a triangular look. So let's just kind of go in and start jumping in right on the details of the face or right on the, 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 the character here. So for this one, um, for a more triangular shape and stuff, I want to probably go for maybe uh, a little bit more of a tapered face. Uh, we're going to utilize maybe a tapered, uh, a tapered jaw there to kind of help exaggerate some of the features a bit more. And so we're going to use all of these things here to, again, hopefully invoke some interesting triangular shape design. Now, some of the differences we're going to be utilizing as well is maybe we'll change here um, the way that we draw her eyes or the way that we structure the, the shape of the, uh, what's it called? The shape of the hair and stuff, right? So let me go ahead and do all of that. And, um, yeah, now we, we're not really going to be seeing a lot of her, uh, we're not going to see a lot of her ears at all. If, if anything, we're not going to see them at all. Uh, but we're going to go in here and just kind of add some of the basic features for all of these things. And I'm just adding in kind of a rough placement for how I would draw a face. So this is kind of the more, whoops, uh, this is the more kind of, uh, simplified version of what I would do if I were to draw out a face. But again, um, what I always encourage a lot of beginners to do is to focus on the 3d shapes a little bit more, focus on the volumes that actually help create the face, because I think that to me, um, is more important overall. Um, but here I'm going to use kind of these large shapes. Um, I'm going to kind of really taper out her hair a bit here, exaggerate them further. And this will, I think, help showcase uh, a little bit more of that triangular shape design that we might be going for, for this character, right? So trying to go in here, maybe we'll add some of that like that, uh, getting some of those kind of sharp angles in there. And this will give us, I think, a more interesting, sharp design that's going to be a little bit exaggerated than maybe what we had uh, with the reference. Here, we're going to split the hair a little bit, uh, two thirds of the way. So we're kind of breaking it up there into thirds. And. I think this will be good enough right here. So using a lot of triangular sharp angles there. Um, and oh, thanks for the follows too, John, John P and cloudy. Appreciate that guys. Welcome in. Okay. Um, here we're going to go for a thinner neck. And let's start working on this one. Um, remember, I remember you said big forms and smaller details. Yeah. So as you guys can see, whenever I'm working on uh, drawing any of these things here, I'm usually starting off by incorporating large big shapes first. 
Uh, and then from those large big shapes, I go in and actually start breaking them out. So this principle is not even a principle that I would say is uh, specific to to art. It's actually something that I used to use all the time when I was a software engineer. So interestingly enough, if you guys study the way or if you guys look at the way that I draw and stuff, um, in some ways, it's a very analytical approach to drawing. And I think a lot of that honesty stems from my my time being an engineer and how I view uh, drawing now or how I just in general view approaching a problem. So I always think of drawing as solving a problem, right? So in this case, the problem is how do we draw, how do we draw a, a female character with triangular features? Okay. So I'm going to go in here and solve it the way that I think I know how to solve it. So I don't know. It's just an interesting way that I think about it. But again, um, Everyone has a different way and of how they think about art too. So don't let my way be the only way that you approach drawing. All right, well, let's go in here and let's start drawing out um, this kind of face shape right here for this girl. And I think for this one, I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, you know, just kind of play around with some of the shape a little bit more and we'll see how that all kind of, uh, comes together. Uh, but yeah, for those of you who are watching, um, out here today, live on Twitch, um, let me know how, how the stream was so far. Was it helpful to see me do this process of breaking down these shapes? Was there anything that you thought that was interesting or you were like, oh, you know what, KSM, I already know how to do all these things, which is okay too. Let me know, guys, if you were like, eh, you know what, I prefer more of the anatomy tutorial stuff uh, because, again, at the end of the day, I'm not just here to draw on Twitch. Um, I, do that, I do that already on my own time. Um, I'm mostly here because I want to help you guys as well in, uh, in your art journey. And so knowing what works and what doesn't work for you guys and what's helpful to you guys um, actually benefits me a lot. So do let me know. Do let me know if you were like, oh, this is super helpful. Um, it wasn't that helpful. You know, I would, I liked certain aspects of it. Like maybe you guys just liked me doing the beginning portion with the Valorant characters. Uh, that's fine too. <laughs> you know, or yeah, I'm like, did you guys like that I did the Valorant demo? Because I don't normally do that. Um, but I thought of doing it today because I was like, you know what? I kind of want to, um, I kind of wanted to, to show you guys like actual application of shape design stuff before we actually draw, um, before we actually draw it out ourselves, you know? All right. I'm putting away the reference because I don't think we need the reference anymore. Um, so let's just kind of go in now and start drawing this one out ourselves out uh, here. Hart Ludwig. Hey, thanks for the follow, Hart Ludwig. Um, and Antium and the Sleepy Rabbit. Can you show me those Valorant characters? Um, I would say just check out the VODs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's unfortunate. Um, Um, love watch whenever I catch you live. Thank you, Golden Goob. I learned your triangular approach for brows, eyes, and nose. Nice. I think it's great. This is exactly what I was looking for so much. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So I would say for the most part, um, pretty good. You guys are okay with it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I think, you know, it's teaching is hard in general. I'm sure some of you guys know that. Um, but oftentimes I come up with these curriculums based off of what I think I would have found helpful growing up. Um, you know, like when I was younger and stuff, what are things I would have wanted to see and, and so forth. And so, um, yeah, that's usually how I do it. But yeah. Teaching is tough in general. Like I love teaching, but I usually, you know, I, I have to plan a lot of the, I have to plan a lot of the things that I'm, that I'm coming up here with. Maybe I'll give her a smile. Would that make her too v evil? Hmm. 
Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see. She looks like she's evil, man. <laughs> like the, 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 the shape design already alone. Just like, I don't know, man. She looks like she's, she's a, she's the type of girl that when people say you like, bro, just tell her you like her. The worst thing she's going to do is, uh, is say, is say no. And she's the, <laughs> she's like, she's the type of girl that would definitely do more than just say no. I don't know. She, she looks like a villain. We, and we've only drawn the rough sketch. She would say ew. <laughs> Ew! What's that one? Um, that one Jen Jenna Ortega clip. Oh man, you gotta watch out. You gotta watch out for these. Um, I think it's helpful. The most interesting is your thoughts behind the process. Okay, cool, cool. I'll try to share my thoughts more and stuff. And again, I do appreciate you guys sharing your input because it's um, it's things like that that personally I think helps me. Um. It also helps me improve my my tutorials and all the stuff that I do out here for you guys. So yeah, please, please give me feedback. You know, let me know. And also on my YouTube channel as well. Um, a lot of you guys have given me feedback on my YouTube channel to help it improve. And I am very, very thankful for all of the all of the feedback that we get out here. So um I appreciate all of that. Uh everyone out here. Thank you so much. Okay, um, but here's that rough sketch. More of like a, again, more of like, this is more to be more of like a stylized look, more of like an anime style-ish. You know, just to try to show you guys a little bit of a different, maybe more exaggerated show uh, case here of, of uh, drawing a character, right? But let's go in now and actually start roughing out the, or cleaning up some of the rough details here to get it to look a little bit more, uh, more polished, okay? But let's uh, let's go ahead and do some of that. So while I go do this, um, I can start answering again some questions in the chat. So if anyone here has any questions, do feel free to ask it again in the chat. Uh, more than happy to answer questions right now. I know there was a lot of questions earlier before we had to jump in here. Um, and then in the meantime, I'll be drawing this one out and then we'll talk a bit about... Um, I'll talk to you guys a bit about some of the design uh, decisions that I'm making as well. Um, do I ever draw nature like like trees and stuff like that like 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 nature nature? Or do you mean like do, do I ever draw from life? Um, I don't draw nature as much to be honest. Yeah, not not too much uh not too much nature drawings on my part. Boop boop boop. Okay, just to kind of warp it out a little bit there um will you be adding her glasses she had them on on top of her head oh yeah we'll add the glasses don't worry i know you guys are you guys have this thing where you think glasses on characters make them evil but yeah we're gonna we're gonna add those in a bit um didn't I get a job gig recently? Um, depends on when the last time you were here. But um, yeah, for those of you wondering, I do currently work for uh, the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, the studio is called Powerhouse Animation. So they worked on Castlevania and a few other projects that I will, uh, that you may have heard of. Um, but yeah, that's currently where I work right now, If that's uh, if that's what you're referring to. But otherwise, um, 
I don't have any other other gigs that I've worked on recently. I've actually well, there was one I was supposed to work on. There was a, a pilot project for a show, but I decided to turn it down mostly because I didn't I just didn't have time in my schedule. And I think if I were to pick it up, I'd have to quit I'd have to drop streaming. And so I was like, eh, I'm not really I don't know. I like streaming on Twitch. So <laughs> I would much prefer to be able to stream on Twitch um, and hang out with you guys. So I did ultimately turn down one project, but who knows? That might change. Oh, Opal. You know what? I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, like a evil Opal almost. Um, let's see here. Um, can we do a darker skin tone next one? I'd like to see how different shapes work on different features. Um, sure. I mean, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, we can possibly do, I can possibly do one that is a little bit more, uh, like different ethnic groups and stuff like that and different kind of, uh, just features. Yeah, we can do some of that. Uh, working on the comedy, trying to speed run panels. Ah, uh, yes. The life, the life of a comic artist. <laughs> I, I don't envy it. It's a lot of hard work, but the payoff is the payoff is incredible. When you, when you see a story unfold and you look at the sequence and you look at all the, the things that you've done, I feel like comic artists are one of the hardest working artists I know. It's crazy. The amount of work that you guys do. Um, and hey, how's it going? Little Abadir, thank you for the follow. And everybody else who's been coming in here, thank you for the follow as well. Uh, Joe's Knight, It's Magical, uh, Patch, Pobart, and everyone else coming in here from the stream. Now, really quick, guys, I just want to mention that I do run ads on my stream every hour. Uh, one's going to be running right about now. So if you do uh, get an ad out here, thank you again for sticking around. They help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. Now, if you don't want to see any ads, um, I do consider subscribing or using a Prime sub. But either way, thank you for your support. And I hope to see you guys after, um, after the ad break. Um, do you have any advice for writing and teaching an art class? I just recently got the opportunity and I'm super excited. Oh, that's super awesome. Um, okay. So your, your advice is how to, how to teach. I don't think I've gotten that question in, a, in uh, ever. Oh, thank you for the sub. Thank, thanks for the sub, uh, Niame. Four months out here. Um, sure. My advice for teaching in general is that when it comes to teaching, I think the best way to teach is to think of like, put yourself in the shoes of your students. And then from there, think about the things that they might be struggling with. Right? So whenever I teach you guys stuff, I just think about, okay, well, what are things that I've struggled with and how can I teach that to help people who maybe, you know, maybe they're still struggling with these things. Like what can I do to help them understand some of these topics? Um, and then from there, I try to simplify it out and I try to make it as, um, I try to make it as digestible as possible, but while also keeping it entertaining, because at the end of the day, um, I think education should be fun. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not everyone thinks that, but I think it should be, I think, I think drawing and, and, and improving your skills and all of that stuff should be a fun process. So those are my usual goals when it comes to teaching, um, out here on Twitch. Like you guys know, I always tell you guys to, to you know, type an F in the chat and stuff. And that's usually because, uh, I, I try to see if you guys can relate to the things that I, you know, that I've struggled with. But there you go. That's a uh, very, very generic, <laughs> very generic advice. I apologize if it's, uh, not the most helpful advice. But that's what I would say. I mean, I think also everyone teaches differently as well. So everyone has a different style of how they teach. Some people like to be a bit more spontaneous, you know, um, other people like to go by the book and stuff. Oh, hey, how's it going? Eichmann, welcome back in. How have you been? How have you been?
Uh, but yeah, um, as for the hairstyle and stuff here, you kind of see here, all I'm really doing is going in now and just kind of breaking up the hair structures that we have and really just giving it more detail overall. Um, I think this is kind of a nice, easy technique that you can utilize. Um, so going in from these larger shapes first, and then from these larger shapes, um, actually kind of breaking them up a bit more to give it more texture and stuff, you know? Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out, boss man, uh, and everyone else who's coming in here today. Oh, thanks for crunch crunching my thirst. Also, uh, yeah, welcome in everyone who's coming back in here. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the stream so far. Um, I, I genuinely enjoy this part of like character design because I feel like this is where you can really, uh, start to kind of incorporate your own aesthetic, incorporate your own decisions and stuff. And I think that is where, um, true character design comes in. Like sure. Learning the anatomy and stuff is good. Like all the technique and stuff. But I think at the end of the day, good character design is less about having really good technique and more about conveying interesting ideas. And so learning different techniques like utilizing uh, shape language, right? Or um, utilizing different types of clothing or doing research. All of those things, I think, is what really makes cool, interesting designs for your characters. Let me actually add in the rest of the face here before we jump into the, the hair. Um, oh, thank you, Danira. Yeah, we haven't even, <laughs> we haven't done a lot yet with this character, um, but I'm trying to speed run it a little bit. Are you guys back from the ad break, by the way? Uh, do let me know in the chat if you guys are back in here. Uh, so that way I can talk a little bit more. I usually try to hold off a little bit on um, sharing too much stuff during the ad break because I don't want people to feel like they're missing out. Um, oh, thanks for the follow too, Linkman. Appreciate that. Have you ever covered folds like clothing? Have I ever like, is that what you're asking about? Like clothing folds and stuff? You know what? Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, have I ever covered clothing folds? Well, the answer is, um, the answer is, that is all that we did on my last stream <laughs> Saturday. We covered clothing folds from simple to complex. We covered small, medium, large shape design. We talked about different textures of clothing. Um, and that was all in my stream on um, Saturday's stream, day 28. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be on YouTube uh, in a bit. Not, not, right, not right away, but my editors need time to edit and all that stuff to make sure it's nice and clean. Um, but yes, it will be on YouTube eventually. Um, thank you so much, Previs. I appreciate the, uh, appreciate the kind words out here again. Um, yeah, guys do let me know if, if, if you found anything interesting out here on, uh, today's stream, any of the particular topics that we covered, because, um, I try to choose stuff that I think people will find interesting, but also if people don't find it interesting, then I'm just not going to teach it as much as I would other topics. Cause you know, there's already, there's already so many different things to teach in art. And so I try to pick out the ones that I feel like are, um, I try to pick out the ones that I think most people will find valuable. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, um, let's see here. Yeah, when it comes out, you guys, or actually, I mean, you guys who are watching the VODs now, if you guys don't want to wait, you guys can check out my Twitch VODs. Um, they're just not going to be as edited as my YouTube videos. So if you guys don't care about that and you just want to like sit through a stream, sure. You guys can check out my Twitch VODs. Those will be available for a little bit of time. Um, but for those of you who want to wait a little bit, um, they will eventually come out on, um, my YouTube channel, probably in maybe about, give it like two weeks or so. Uh, we'll do the colors later. Um, but okay, let's go in here now and start finishing up some of the details here. And I think we'll be good with this example uh, for today. Hey, how's it going, Rat Lord? Welcome back in. Happy belated birthday. Let me give you a shout out. Oh, thank you, Jay. Art school. Yeah, it's my art school dropout shirt. Wait, is your birthday in March? Or is it April? Oh, March 23rd. So it's like super belated. <laughs> okay, okay. I see. So you're also a Pisces like myself. Shout out to the Pisces. Pisces gang. Wait, are you Pisces? No, you're not, right? Oh, lame, not Pisces. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Only judging slightly. Um, doesn't sign the birthday magma canvas. I certainly wasn't just there by coincidence. Wait, what? Was there a birthday magma canvas? Damn. I'm really missing out on a lot of cool things. All right, but um, this is going to be mostly the design here for this character. Uh, we'll go in here and add a little bit more for the... Oh, oh no, the liquify. I accidentally undid it. That's an oof. Um, you're an angry ram. Yeah. I think I've asked this before, too, and you told me about this. Um, yo, Curious Chicana, thanks for the sub. Hey, there you go. <laughs> now, thank you so much for the sub, and I appreciate you checking out my YouTube videos. Um, again, guys, if you guys are just coming in right now for the first time, or if you uh, didn't know, um, I do have a YouTube channel that's uh, actually been growing a lot. It's been incredible to see how much it's been growing and um, all the support you guys have given it. Uh, but over there on my YouTube channel is where I do upload a bunch of my tutorial videos uh, that come from my streams out here on Twitch. And so all the things that I cover out here um, do end up back on my YouTube channel and they're going to be edited versions as well, too. So they're going to be a little bit shorter, um, but just as much information um, that we have out here. So if you guys are looking for um, something like that, you know, maybe you maybe you you missed part of my stream or just can't catch it because of the work schedule and stuff. Uh, fear not, because the YouTube channel is gonna be there. So thank you again, everybody who uh, supports that and stuff. You guys are dope. Um, thanks for hanging out here, Frank. Appreciate that. Appreciate you coming out on my live streams. 
All right, so let me go ahead and I'm going to speed run on this hairstyle as well. So give me a sec, guys, as we go in here. Um, just adding in a few like breaks into the hair. Maybe it'll go this way first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, um, again, just to, to kind of recap, when it comes to adding in uh, shape design and all of that stuff for your characters, I really do think that there's so many different ways to approach it. Um, oftentimes for my own designs, what I like to focus on are things like the hair. Uh, I'm a big fan of making the hair design kind of match up and stuff. I'm also a big fan of changing up the face shape. So I think face shape can also be easily one that you can kind of warp out and, you know, make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, so overall, I think there are so many different aspects and avenues to uh, designing your character and giving them interesting designs and we'll take a look maybe tomorrow uh, on tomorrow for day 30 where we we can also utilize it for do doing different body types as well right so not only with um, simple shapes and stuff like the face but you can also use it for the overall look and feel for a character and for that one we'll probably look again at Valorant as a, as a great example of that because I feel like uh, Valorant does a really good job of showcasing some of those subtle shape designs on characters that are otherwise pretty realistic in nature. Um, oh yeah, as for my drawing tablet, I do use um, I do use the iPad, and then there, it right now is currently sitting on a something called the Sketchboard Pro, um, which I highly recommend to anybody who is who is using the iPad. Sketchboard Pro is probably one of the best things I've purchased as hardware for the iPad other than the Apple Pencil, which I would say is a probably a necessity to, to, to grab. Um, but other than the Apple Pencil, I would say the Sketchboard Pro has been pretty nice. It's been uh, one of the few things that actually helps me to draw longer um, out here. So if you guys don't know, I draw for about 12 hours a day, both... Um, just from streaming on Twitch here for about four hours and then uh, and then going into doing studio work afterwards. So I do a lot about I do a lot of drawing every day and to to kind of make sure that I'm not getting injured or getting uh, pain and stuff. I try to make sure my ergonomics is nice and set. I just use your fingers and fingers to draw OP God tier. All right. Um, I think for the most part, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of just keep this one here, uh, like this, because I think the details, we can add more and more details afterwards, but this is again, this is the overall idea here that we have just utilizing shape design and overall silhouette can sometimes do a lot as well too, to kind of help convey some of the aspect there of the design of the character. Oh, no, 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 I'll bring that back. Um, let me go ahead that. Okay. Blood techniques. What's the blood technique? Using the finger to draw. Okay. So we're going to go in here. We're going to do all that. Um, and let's see. Maybe add a little bit of shadow right there. Oh, cool. Um, the pen doesn't come with the iPad. No, it doesn't. I know it's crazy, but I think it's because not everybody, not everyone draws, you know, so not everyone buys an iPad, uh, for the purpose of drawing. Sometimes people just buy it because they, I don't know, they, they like to have like a big screen or something when they're, when they're reading a book or watching a YouTube video or, or something like that. So 
a lot of different use cases I would say for uh, for the iPad personally I think if you are gonna be an artist that uses the iPad on a regular basis I feel like you kind of have to um, I don't want to say you have to get it but I would say it's probably one of the best options um, using the Apple pencil over like a third-party tool so they can charge extra for the pen uh yeah that too you know how apple is all of the accessories uh sold separately imagine if they sold you the charger separately sheesh <laughs> that would actually be insane i think people would do you think people would riot i think so if they sold you the charger separately, damn, I would be like, hello? What do you mean? <laughs> okay, boom, boom, boom. All right. Um, but I think for the most part, we've uh, we've done here. We've done here a lot of the, the work that we wanted it to kind of com complete here. So what I'll do now is I'll go in and add maybe a little bit of uh, some of the some of the shape designs here that we were talking about. And then I'll also kind of color in some of these, too. So let me kind of block these in really quickly. They already do that. Really? They sell chargers separately. So if you buy an iPad, wait, really? No, no, that can't be true. You mean to tell me if you buy an iPad, you have to also buy a charger separately? What? Hmm. <laughs> that seems kind of crazy to me. They stopped doing that? Damn. That's insane. We got to boycott that stuff. What the heck? Justice. <laughs> justice for my uh for my for my apple users out here um but there you go guys we've got here um i'm gonna go ahead and color these but basically we've got our various uh different types of uh shapes here right so we got kind of a more triangular shape here with using kind of sharper edges. We have here the rounder shapes that we showcased earlier. We've got also the, um, we've also got here the more kind of uh, boxy shapes as well too. So again, just showing you guys all the different types of shapes and stuff that we can use uh, for drawing out our characters. Also, thank you for the follows Kiki, Muji, um, and Shoji as well. Welcome in everybody who's coming in here. Uh, for those of you guys who are here today, I'd love to know uh, how you guys found my stream. Was it from the recommended? Did you guys just stumble upon it? Was it from my YouTube channel, perhaps? Do let me know in the chat how you guys, how'd you guys ended up here? Uh, in the meantime, let me, I'm just coloring these out in different kind of shades of gray because I don't want to color today. Originally from PCAT? Yo, I love PCAT streams.
Um, did we use this color? We did not. Okay, cool. Now we can. Um, let's see here. Uh, thanks for the follow too. Um, uh, Mirieka, also misprint. Hey, welcome. Welcome back in. Thanks for the fun fact, guys. I was playing Valorant yesterday and I ended up playing against misprint. He got clapped though. We beat him. <laughs> That's so wild playing against my viewers. I mean, I got carried, but you know, still a win is a win. 